And uh, joining us now is uh, Ms. Henryka Moszczyska Dendes, uh, Polish Undersecretary of State. Um, I, I'm looking at uh, your resume. It's a very illustrious uh, career in incredible things. Uh, but uh, what, what's really interesting uh, to, to us uh, this morning is let's move all the way back to 2002. Um, and you headed the Office of European Coordination in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, we were just looking at the images of 20 years ago, uh, how different everything looked, how different this place was. Um, it's incredible just looking at those images to realize how much uh, things have changed. If you could just, uh, you know, travel back in time for us a little bit and tell us, it must have been an incredibly challenging task uh, to coordinate between, you know, the, the institutions in, uh, in the European Union and the institutions that we had left here after uh, the fall of communism. First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, indeed, it seems to be a very long journey, this 20 years uh, uh, back in time, uh, back to 2004. I remember when joining the, uh, the Foreign Office uh, in 2002, I never expected to, uh, to become part of the negotiations team and the EU department. I mean, actually, one of the very first uh, EU departments in the, uh, in the Polish, uh, Polish administration. At that time, we were people in early or late 20s, now we 20 years on that road uh, and I have the impression uh, I mean for me looking back it's really a completely different world uh, as uh, as one of your guests said before uh, we were an emerging uh, country at uh, at that time the large bulk of negotiation pieces, uh, the 30 chapters which uh, stood ahead of us at the uh, late 90s seemed almost impossible to handle. It was such a conundrum of different challenges, be it institutional, be it legal uh, aspects of the European integration. We had to somehow tackle them piece by piece. Uh, let me just say that within the first oh, two, three years of negotiations, we managed 25 of those uh, chapters and the most difficult five, including free movement of labor and, uh, and agriculture were left to the very end. Today, no one really remembers how difficult it, uh, it was, but the protests by the, by the Polish agricultural uh, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, let's say, sectoral challenges uh, uh, seem to be impossible to cross at, uh, at that time. Today, I mean, uh, the Polish Polish uh, uh, landscape has changed completely. Uh, those who are most afraid of the uh, of the uh, enlargement process are actually those profiting the most, be it the Polish uh, businesses, be it the Polish agricultural sector. Our food exports are booming and uh, we're not only exporting to the European Union, we're exporting uh, globally. Poland uh, managed to get from place 25, I think, of the, of the biggest uh, uh, economies globally to the gates of the G20, we now uh, number 21. So it's just an incredible success story if we think about it. And uh, in fact, I believe that it's, it's a mammoth task, really, what, uh, what uh, was managed to achieve. And in fact, many cannot even imagine Poland without the EU as such. I believe that now with new generations, they cannot imagine themselves without now participating in the EU. And in fact, now when we ask um, now random everyday Joes on the street, everyone says 80% of them uh, of Poles say that um, they feel their impact of the EU on the daily lives. So this is also a huge change. Now looking into the future and, and seeing the present, now uh, Poland has increased its importance in the bloc. And some say that also with the Weimar Triangle, Poland is a bit of a mediator between France and Germany. We do see the increase importance also diplomatically speaking but how do you envision Poland uh, now in a couple of years how do you see now Poland evolving in this political landscape and diplomatically speaking I think the perception of Poland has completely changed within the uh, last 20 years but it's not only about the outside world it's also about our domestic perception of ourselves I always tend to say Poland is one of the biggest member states after Brexit we are actually the fifth biggest member state in the Union so our wage is quite big uh, and to, we also learned to punch above our weight uh, within the last uh, 20 years so I think in many processes 
through the skills of our uh, diplomatic community, of our politicians, we can actually be quite a constructive but also important actor when it comes to the decision-making uh, procedures. So be it, let's say, the relations with Ukraine, the future of enlargement. I mean, the enlargement agenda is back. We will have a new institutional uh, cycle beginning after the uh, EP parliamentary, uh, so the European Parliament's uh, elections in June. It will be the moment when the enlargement agenda should be again taken seriously, looking not only on, on Ukraine, but from the Polish perspective, obviously, this is uh, this is our partner number, number one when it comes to this agenda, but also to the Western Balkans. There are still countries waiting uh, at the gates of the European uh, Union and knocking on the doors. We have a quite unique uh, perception of the process because we went through that very same experience. I think we, we somehow well versed in the uh, in the whole technical processes and we can share our best practices and uh, and our experiences with those partners and talking about other aspects i mean there's plenty of uh, of issues where where the union should actually give new responses looking on the on the world after the pandemics after uh, after the economic crisis people actually want more europe in many aspects be it the health uh, uh, sector uh, be it access to uh, to health services and, uh, and many other issues where the union still should offer new answers and new incentives. All right. Uh, so yeah, we, we are definitely at, at a moment uh, of transformation uh, for Poland. It's been 20 years. And it, I, I always say that uh, in these last 20 years, we were playing catch up. And I think that uh, we have caught up. But with this catch up comes a lot more responsibility. Um, because uh, we're becoming leaders in the union, uh, that brings with it a lot of responsibility. Um, is Poland ready uh, to take that responsibility? I am definitely convinced that we are uh, ready. Uh, and uh, Poland is also, uh, I think, representing not only ourselves, but also the voices of the region. Nowadays, when it, I mean, history is back. Uh, Francis Fukuyama, after 20, uh, 1989, uh, used to say that, that history ended. Unfortunately, we see the revenge of history, to, to rephrase that, uh, uh, that sentence. Uh, and I think there are many new challenges where Poland actually is a natural leader, also because of our geographical location. Look at the challenges in the defense and security uh, sector. This very hard security has never been taken seriously by the European Union because it never had to deal with that. Nowadays, I mean, looking at the global world and the challenges in the whole region, the war, the aggression uh, of Russia against Ukraine, defense seems to be the natural subject uh, for, for the Union to tackle. Also, in the context of the, let's say, global changes, the situation in the US, the, the uh, outcome of the, of the elections, the U.S.'s pivot to Asia. So this is definitely the global context which puts the Union under more pressure in issues which seemed not to be that important even a decade ago. And I really want to know, perhaps expand on Conrad's question, because uh, Conrad stated that we already caught up now and uh, we are moving forward and taking the responsibility. But I want to ask a twisted question. Do you think that over these 20 years, did we really utilize our potential to catch up with Western countries? Do, do you feel like there is some room of improvement and where we are lacking to improve? I think we actually caught up and, uh, and in many aspects, in particular the economic aspect, Poland really made it homework. Uh, you spoke a lot today about the GDP uh, increase and uh, these numbers are just uh, incredible. I mean, if you look at our GDP per, uh, per capita, it almost quadrupled from 5,000 euros in, uh, back into, in the early 2000s to almost 20,000 uh, 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 this year. So it's an incredible incredible increase. If you look at, at the uh, uh, EU's average uh, uh, per capita from 47% to almost 80 now within this last uh, two decades, it's, uh, it's really an incre incredible, uh, incredible change. Obviously, there are aspects where we have to think again or redevelop our our policies beat the demographic developments. Poland is getting older. Uh, we are also uh, faced with challenges in the context of, uh, of the demographic situation, the needs uh, uh, of Polish economy for new labor, but also this 
famous middle income trap where the economy has to think uh, about, let's say, new sources of growth, where innovation, automatization needs to be taken more seriously, where the you know, um, investments into uh, innovations and, uh, uh, and I would say more modern uh, aspects of economy are, uh, are desperately needed. So these are all areas uh, where we also can do better. Of course, yep. So we can't rest on our laurels. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work ahead of us, uh, and uh, yep, there's no limit to progress, certainly. True. Well, thank you so much for joining us and the Secretary of State. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, that was Henrika Moschiska-Dendis, uh, Undersecretary of State.